leader, candidate for auditor as well, with us via telephone. Do you go through that uh, at the podium, Eric? Sometimes. But, hey, I just want to say there's never a dull moment on your show. I mean, just was talking about paranormal activity. Now you're going to trans, uh, transition to states' finances. That's it's the truth, amazing. man, which, which aren't as scary as they would have been in a conversation, say, uh, seven years ago when the finances were quite frightening. Right? <laughs> you're absolutely right. So good morning, gentlemen. How are you guys doing? Great. Good morning. Doing well. Yeah, Excellent, yeah. Sir. So, uh, you know, the month ending September 30th was strong for the state. Uh, personal income tax collections. They were up over estimates by $112 million. Your consumer sales tax collections were up over estimates also by $11 million. Uh, corporate net income uh, tax collections were strong. They were up over estimates by $56 million. And severance tax collections, they were up as well by $4 million. So collections for the month of September was estimated right around $467 million. We brought in $602 million. So we have a positive cash flow of about $204 million. And for the year right now, we're sitting at about $234 million plus. So that's a good thing. And that's so, after one quarter of the year. That's after one quarter of the year. If we continue the trend, you know, on average, 78 to $100 million a month, you'll end up with another billion-dollar surplus. And this is after an income tax cut has loped about a billion off the top already, right? After you're exactly right, and after we also parked about 400 million as well. So, yeah, all indications were we're doing very well. All right, so 234 uh, million yeah. to the plus side. To the plus. And as you take a look now at the months of October, November, December, how do those typically play out on average in regards to relationship of uh, revenues to the budget uh, that was estimated? They play out very well because a lot of uh, holidays, you see your consumer sales tax increase should be strong. Uh, you get a lot of people with Christmas bonuses, so personal income tax collections and all that. It's usually January or sometimes around February or March, which slows down a little bit. But then it picks up strong again for the remaining end of the fiscal uh, uh, session. The governor, who is very popular in the state, has when he gets criticized, some of it is for uh, artificially estimating low numbers so that the surplus looks greater than it really should be if uh, the numbers were estimated properly. Would you regard the estimates for this year as artificially low, Eric, or more realistic in the grand scheme of things? I think it's more realistic. But keep in mind, re remember, you're projecting this eight to nine months out in advance. You're never going to get it 100% right. All you can look at is historical data, and you can get them somewhat close, but you're not going to get them right. Keep in mind, you've heard me mention this before, that if you set the estimates uh, too low and revenue uh, – may exceed it, but if it doesn't exceed it, you could also have a situation where the governor would have to make a mid-year cut if he sets the revenue estimates way too high, you're not bringing in enough uh, revenue, he would have to do a mid-year cut uh, with all agencies, and who knows what that mid-year cut could be. So you try to get them somewhat close, and uh, I know there's a lot of times people will argue, well, the revenue estimates are set too low. Well, I mean, where do you want them set to the dollar? I don't know that you could ever do that. In a way, it's a no-win situation, as we saw with the first two months, because if the numbers come in just above the estimates, it's a, hey, I told you these surpluses wouldn't last forever. Right. And, and then when they come in too high, it's, man, they're estimating too low. So right. What, right. Are you, what are you going to do there, right? Exactly. All right, exactly. John? <clears throat> but how do we explain the surprise? You know, over and over again, we have these, and it's, it's lovely to have more money than, than we thought we were going to, but after the income tax cuts and all the, the recent austerity issue, measures that have been taken, we still have these surpluses. Where is it coming from? What's the su well, John, surprise element? Well, John, keep in mind, unemployment is still low. You're looking at 3.6% for unemployment. Uh, the next, we won't know what September unemployment rate is until sometime here in October because it lags about a month behind. So we, we've got workers, we've got citizens working, producing, and uh, that's a good thing. You're also, sales are strong. You're seeing your consumer sales tax uh, collections come in a lot higher. So I would say it's a it's a condition of both people working and people having disposable income where they can buy things. Do we still have an underemployment problem in West Virginia? Where we only do, and... But I think you're going to continue to ha have that. I mean, obviously, uh, West Virginia, uh, we have a, an older population. Uh, we have a, uh, we're just starting to see that slight net migration in of uh, people 
it's going to take time, but I think in the end, you know, we're making a lot of, uh, we're making an impact. More and more people are finding out about West Virginia and what we're doing. I think we've strategically placed ourselves to where you're going to see even more growth in the next coming years. Should I be budgeting for another income tax cut? Oh, absolutely. I think it's going to happen. So remember, that'll be uh, next uh, August is when they will review the uh, consumer price index numbers. And then uh, after that point, then you'll see what percentage it will be. Remember, it'll be up to 10%. So I told you before, we're going to test the economic theory. If you want more of something, you tax, you tax less of it. So is we'll the, see if the economic theory works. Is the 10% cut based on the initial tax rate or is the 10 percent cut based on the current tax rate which has already been cut 21.25 percent it will reduce the current tax rates an additional 10 percent the current so in in theory you could keep cutting 10 percent but never eliminate the income tax if you did that very possible but the the object the whole goal goal here is at some future point as you start seeing more and more positive growth you start to bring in more and more revenue. That was the whole concept of the flat budget. The whole concept of the flat budget was to rein in spending, keep our budget flat, and use that money to offset uh, income tax relief. And uh, we've been able to, to do some of it. I would have liked to have done more, but uh, that's not the direction that we went. But keep in mind, we did do our largest tax cut in West Virginia's history of around $800 million. So. Every year, if we can if we can cut an additional two hundred and fifty million dollars, that's still more. That's real money. It's money in, in uh, our citizens' pockets. Matt Harvey. Good morning, Eric. How, how's the campaign going, sir? Campaign's going well. I'm heading down to uh, Greenbrier County tonight, down in Lewisburg. I heard um, they're having a, a pretty pretty big event down there. Pretty big event. Over two hundred and fifty people. So. At least 250 people are going to hear the reasons why they should elect Eric Householder for auditor. <laughs> so, uh, been to Upshur County, Randolph County, Jefferson County, um, over in Putnam County. So, I'm crisscrossing across the state, and uh, I'm enjoying. I love the campaign. I'm, I'm an aggressive campaigner, and uh, I'm expecting that uh, when it's all said and done, I'll be your next auditor. Do you uh, notice any trends or differences between? that are different between, uh, in different regions of the state? Well, somewhat. I mean, right now, social issues, if, if you're referring to that, there's a populist message out there with social issues. Keep in mind, I'm attacking my campaigns all about ending corruption and fraud, so I'm talking about the fiscal issues. Uh, and I think that plays very well. It's time to end corruption and fraud in West Virginia. And don't forget, when there's corruption or fraud, it, all it does is it just siphons away valuable taxpayer dollars from our roads, from our schools, from seniors and veterans programs. So that's all we got to curtail it and get it under control. Do we have a corruption and fraud problem? Absolutely, we do. Absolutely. Where does it manifest itself? It manifests itself all throughout state government. Remember, any time that there's money involved, there's a propensity to steal or misuse public money. And uh, that's why we got to crack down on it. The West Virginia auditor really doesn't audit West Virginia uh, legislature expenditures. It, it's really more about the local governments, isn't it, Eric? It doesn't do very much in state government, and that's where I'd like to ramp it up because it's time to clean our own house up. It does. It is responsible for your county school boards, county governments, municipalities, and other miscellaneous boards. So. No, it's time to clean up state government, and uh, that's the main reason why I'm running. Do you have that as an auditor? Do you have the ability to make that decision on your own, or does it need legislative approval if you decide, I want to start investigating West Virginia legislative expenditures? The, the code is silent on that. Uh, I, will, I will say this, and Matt Harvey can jump in as well. The auditor is the only agency that has prosecutorial power, so they have the ability to investigate everything. I mean, every every dollar that your school board spends. I mean, every dollar that is given to someone for a grant. So there's no other agency that has that power like the auditor's office. And, and it's, it's kind of secondary to the local prosecutor. 
So the auditor's office will say, here's here's the facts, here's our investigation. Right. Do you need assistance from us in prosecuting exactly. it? Exactly. So the, the, audit, the auditor doesn't have prosecutorial powers. They turn it over to the prosecutor. The, they have, well, either or. The, the, so the local prosecutor may say, sure, I'll, I'll love to have it. Or if it's you know a complex financial crime that involves accountants that, that they have on staff at the auditor's office, and they did the investigation, have the investigators, they may set second chair. They may do the, the whole thing themselves. So they do have a little bit of prosecutorial power. Yes. Eric, why has the office broken down the way it has in the sense that it's traditionally used right now to invest, investigate local municipalities uh, or, or county governments as opposed to state transactions? Why did it devolve that way? Well, I mean, I can't answer that. Uh, JB has done a wonderful job. And keep in mind, when Republicans took over, I think overall we've done a great job cleaning up a lot of these agencies. But I'm looking at what's the ne- what is the next step? How do we go forward? And uh, I just think the next step for me, uh, if I'm going to be your auditor, is to clean up state government. That's what I've been wired to do. I've tried to do it as your finance chairman. Uh, keep in mind, it's very hard to do that because you're inundated with policies. You're trying to get, you know, people want their bills ran. You're trying to get a budget out and out the door, a balanced budget, unlike our federal government. You're trying to get that out within the 60-day session. So it's very hard to do it, and you can only work on you know, smaller things. I want to get back to the excuse me, the corruption and, and fraud piece. So if assuming you're elected, um, are there people who should be um, nervous about a jail cell in their future? Absolutely. That's uh, one of the things that I am telling people, that when we find those who are stealing from the taxpayers, we're going to set a record of sending corrupt government officials to jail. Because remember, they're stealing from the taxpayers. This is our money that's used for roads and schools and everything else. So, yes, we can't turn a blind eye to it. Where do you see or project most of the the flow of bad money to be? It's, it's rampant. I think throughout state government you're starting to see more allegations of uh, problems coming out with uh, Department of Highways, uh, Department of uh, Health and Human Resources, uh, obviously education. You, the biggest thing is, John, uh, that I want to emphasize, if, the, if public money is being used for what it was intended, then that's okay. But if somebody, remember all of the federal funds that are coming into the state, all that there's a there's a proprietary there's a propensity to misuse those federal dollars. It, there's a uh, an ability for someone to line their pockets. That happens all the time, and you just got to make sure that uh, people aren't misusing public uh, money because all it does is further erode our trust in government. So, and when you have that, you you devolve into anarchy. So, well, Lord knows there's been a a lot of windfall of sudden money into the state between the budget surpluses and then the opioid set settlement and the COVID money. And there, there is a, there's a lot of money flowing. Well, and I'm glad you brought up it with the opioid settlement money. I mean, that's another thing we've got to make sure, obviously that there's uh, parameters put in place that money is going to the counties properly and to these municipalities and being spent what it's intended for. So, there's always a, uh, someone has a reason. I mean, you see it every day in the paper. Somebody is uh, from uh, your local uh, little leagues, they're, they're, they're embezzling money to you name it. So, unfortunately, you try to stop it because um, it just affects everything that we're all trying to achieve. Eric Householder, our guest, he is the House Majority Leader, a candidate for auditor as well. Let's get back to the state's uh, budget, Eric, and talk about the triggers. Is a trigger already kicked in for an automatic 10% uh, no. tax cut next year, or you're you awaiting more mathematical data? Nope. The, the, um, if you remember from the time that I was in there on your show, yes. the actual tax cut doesn't begin until the CPI number comes in. And that number doesn't come in until July, roughly around the end of July. And by mid-August, uh, Secretary of Revenue, along with his staff, will make that announcement what the the actual income tax cut is. What you do is you look at the CPI numbers, there is a mathematical formula, and you also look at what the inflation is. Um, If there's inflation of 2%, then the tax cut is eligible up to an 8% tax cut. 
if inflation is zero, then you have the whole 10%. So, Can it ever be more than 10%? It can never be more than 10% unless, unless a future legislature decides to change that, which can be done at any time. Since there's always some form of inflation, mm-hmm. is it ever likely that there would be a full 10% tax cut? There could be. There could be. Uh, and here's why. If there's surpluses, again, if we have record-breaking surpluses like we did this past session of $1.8 billion, the legislature could decide, hey, look, let's do an additional $400 million on top of that 10%. So the legislature would have that ability to appropriate or, or to uh, enact that tax cut. In regards to some of the needs the state has, are those measured as well? For instance, we obviously have issues with corrections, foster care, and uh, there is a desire for more SROs in the schools. Would any of those fiscal needs trump a tax cut that had the math that worked to trigger it? No, because the way that it's constructed, the state will have at least it restricts spending to about 5%, okay? So you have a little bit of wiggle room of 5% of whatever you want to do. Could it be um, pay increases for state workers and teachers? Possibly. Could it be for those state resource officers? Possibly. So you have the ability uh, up to about 5% to decide what you want to appropriate money to. In regards to state budgets and the Mm -hmm. departments within the state, that have money and we have a lot of unfilled positions that are out there in state government yet those positions are fully funded so as the year ends the department has the money but they never had to spend it on personnel what happens to that money eric it stays in our budget because there's reappropriated language that's in every uh, budget bill that we pass so if we appropriate if, if an agency comes before us and says we'll just use patrick morrissey's agency the attorney general I will need $5 million to complete uh, the 24 legislative uh, uh, session. So we grant, we, we appropriate $5 million for his agency. Throughout the year, if he only spends $3 million, he still has $2 million. He comes back the following years, I- I'm going to need another $5 million. There's reappropriated language, so now he actually has $7 million. Uh, there has been conversation that we could, and we have this ability at any time, to do away with any reappropriated language and pull that money back if they did not spend it all. Sometimes that money's encumbered, and uh, we usually ask the questions in, in the finance committee, hey, we noticed that you uh, you asked for $5 million, you, you only spent $3 million. Why do you still have $2 million left over? Well, I'm using this money for consumer protection, or I've got a big court case coming up, and we're going to need to spend money for out-of-state attorneys or whatever the, the calls may be. Any final questions for Delegate Householder? No, sir. No, sir. Eric, final thoughts are yours. Hey, uh, you know, it's great to always be on your show, and uh, anytime you want me to come back on, I appreciate it. And uh, be on the lookout for Eric Householder for Auditor because I'm running around meeting a lot of people, and I look forward to uh, discussing with you why I should be your next auditor. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate your time as always. See you guys. Bye. He is the House Majority Leader and also installed my heating and AC system uh, at my home.